Namaste. Welcome to Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. The Sanskrit verse you just heard is the Sodashi Mantra. Sodashi Mantra is the most powerful and beneficial Vedic prayer. It invokes the Shakti of Goddess Lalita, also known as Tripura Sundari, Mahamaya, Durga, and many other names. Who is Goddess Lalita? This Srimad Devi Bhagavatam is her story. Listen, and you will gain immense spiritual benefit. Here begins the fourth chapter of the first book of Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. The Rishis said, O Saumya, how was Shukadev, who studied these Purana Sanghitas, born? By which wife of Vyasadev, and how? O highly intelligent one, you have just spoken that Sukadev was not born from the womb in a natural way. He was born of the dry pieces of wood for Homa sacrifice. But we heard before that the great ascetic was a yogi even in his mother's womb. So a great doubt comes to our minds. You better remove that today. How he studied these Puranas, vast in their nature, also described this. Sutta said, In long past days, Satyavati's son, Veda Vyasa, while in his own hermitage on the banks of the river Saraswati, greatly wondered to see a pair of chatakas, sparrows. He saw the couple putting food in the beak of their young, just born of the egg, of beautiful body, red mouth, and greasy body. They did not care at all for their own hunger and toil, all they cared for is to nurture their young ones. He said also that the pair were rubbing their bodies over the body and kissing lovingly the mouth of the youngsters and feeling the highest pleasure. Seeing this wonderful affection of the two sparrows toward their young, Veda Vyas became very anxious and thought over the following in his mind. Oh, what wonder is there when the birds have so much filial affection towards their child that men who want services from their sons would show their affection toward their sons. This pair of sparrows will not perform the happy marriage of their young one and will not see the face of their son's wife nor when they will grow old that their child would become very religious and serve them to attain great merits in heaven. Nor do they expect that their child would earn money and satisfy them, nor that the child would perform their funeral obsequies duly when they die and help them in their sojourn in the next world. Nothing of all these nor will the child perform the Shraddha ceremony at Gaya, nor will the child offer the oblation of a blue bull on the day of offering the sacrifice to its ancestor. The bull is then let loose and held sacred. Yet the pair of sparrows have so much affection toward their young one. Oh, in this world, to touch the body of the sun, especially to nurture the sons, is the highest happiness in life. There is no prospect in the afterbirth of the sunless. Never, never will heaven be his. 
without son. There is none other who can be of help in the next world. Thus, in the Dharma Shastras, Manu and other Munis declare that the man who has sons goes to heaven, and the sonless one can never go to heaven. The man possessing a son is entitled to the heavenly pleasures that can be vividly seen rather than imagined. The man with son is freed from sins. This is the word of the Vedas. The sonless man becomes very much distressed even at the time of death. And while lying on the bed that is the ground at that time, mournfully thinks, This all my vast wealth, various things, this my beautiful house, who will enjoy all these? When the sunless man is thus perplexed in his mind at the time of his death and becomes restless, then it is sure that his future career is full of misfortune. Unless one's mind is calm and serene at the time of death, one can never attain a good goal. Thus thinking variously, Satyavati's son Veda Vyas sighed heavily and became mindful. He thought of various plans and at last, coming to a definite conclusion, he went to the Sumeru mountain to perform tapasya. On reaching there, he thought, Now, which deva will I worship? Vishnu, Shiva, Indra, Brahma, Surya, Ganesh, Kartikeya, Agni, Varuna? Who will grant me a boon quickly and thus satisfy my desire? While thus cogitating in his mind, there came Narada Muni of one mind with Veena in hand, accidentally in his course of travels. Seeing Narada, Satyavati's son Veda Vyas gave him a hearty welcome with great gladness, offering him Argya and Asana, and asked about his welfare. Hearing this question of welfare, Narada Muni spoke, O oh, Dvaipayana, why do you look so careworn? First speak this to me. Veda Vyasa said, The sunless man has no goal. Therefore, there is no happiness in my mind. I am always anxious to get a son, and therefore I am very sorry. Today my mind is sorely troubled with one idea, which deva I may satisfy by my tapasya who will grant my desires. Now I take your refuge. O merciful Maharshi, you are omniscient. Say this quickly. Which deva will I take for my refuge, who will grant me a son? Thanks for listening. Srimad Devi Bhagavatam is best heard from the beginning. So if you just discovered us, please go back and listen to the first episode. Srimad Devi Bhagavatam is a blog, a podcast, even a video series. Check the links in the description for our other sites. This is Adya Shakti Swami. Thanks for listening. Find out what happens in the next episode of Srimad Devi Bhagavatam.